Hey, how you doing? Brian Kane, host of the Mental Performance Mastery Podcast. And I couldn't be more excited to be joined by Cincinnati Reds, Major League Baseball player, mental health advocate, and mental performance master, Jake Fraley. Jake's going to talk about his daily routines, the power and importance of using a breath, how he came to want to work with a mental performance coach, the benefits of working with a mental performance coach, his routines for competing one pitch at a time, and how the mental game has transcended for him from what he does between the lines to really how he lives his life. An athlete who I have tremendous respect and admiration for, Jake Fraley, is going to help you learn to master the mental game. So grab a pen and a notebook and let's get after it. Hey, how you doing? Brian Kane, host of the Mental Performance Mastery Podcast and couldn't be more excited to bring on my friend, Jake Fraley, outfielder with the Cincinnati Reds, to talk about mental performance. And Jake and I go back now through two full Major League Baseball seasons. And uh, if you're listening to this, get ready, get a notebook, because Jake is one of the most advanced guys and most dedicated guys I've ever worked with in the history, 20 years of mental performance coaching when it comes to implementing the process and what it looks like for a professional athlete to do mental performance at an elite level. So Jake, man, I know you block every minute of your day. I appreciate you making time for us to come on and join us with the Mental Performance Mastery Podcast. Thanks for being here. No, I appreciate it, Brian. I'm excited to be here. You know, Jake, take us back, right? It's it's the 2022 season. It's the first half of the season. You're dealing mm-hmm. with, you know, so, some some adversity with with an injury and we get connected. What was it like for you to make that jump to go, man, I'm going to reach out to a mental performance coach. Kind of take us back to where it started. Yeah. Um, I mean, I had no no background as far as a mental performance side um of of my career and and what I do and Quite honestly, to the you know unfortunate aspect of it, I haven't you know didn't really hear anybody else talking much about it either. Um, and I was kind of on the front of going through my career. I was a second round draft pick. I went to LSU, thrived there, thrived through the minor leagues. Had the one goal my whole life of getting to the big leagues. I was fortunate enough and blessed enough to make that happen, and then boom, made it. And I kind of started declining from there. Um, mentally speaking. Um, and from that mental side, slowly started creeping into the the physical side, right? Because if the mind isn't right, you know, your body's going to break down. Um, they work hand in hand with each other. So I eventually got to a point where long story short, you know, I'd had a, you know, about a year and change in the big leagues and I had just injury after injury after injury. Um, my mind wasn't in a great spot. Um, I was filled with anxiety all the time. I did not know how to handle it. I had no more goals set in front of me other than the general idea of, hey, like I want to I want to do well in the big leagues. That was about it. Right. I had the goal of making the big leagues. I made that happen um, by the grace of God. And and then, boom, what am I going to do now? And just having that general idea of I just want to do well here. I quickly realized it wasn't enough, um, not in a, a level that you have to play it in the big leagues. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I ended up having um, a couple injuries hand, you know, back to back to back to back. And uh, basically the last one, just um, I ended up breaking my foot for the second time in uh, in a matter of three years. And, I, you know, I was just on a new team that traded for me, traded two all-stars for me, uh, had a great spring training, started off the year a little bit slow, and then boom, another injury. And I'm trying to nurse this broken foot. And I remember just talking to my wife, talking to, uh, to my agent, um, and, you know, being like – I don't know how I'm going to get back up from this. Um, I really don't. And and quite honestly, I don't even know if I want to. Mm. Um, I'm, you know, I'm on the ends of like, you know, I don't even want to face whatever giants on the other side of this because I don't know how to face it. And just thinking about it is, is making my anxiety go absolutely through the roof to where I can't even function properly. Can't think straight. And uh, my agent, Matt gave me the idea because they had uh, with CAA um, has a little bit of history with working with you and the tremendous work that you do. And he was like, Hey, why don't you, why don't you work? uh, Give Brian a call. And I was like, you're crazy. I was like, why on earth do I need to talk to anybody about my problems and how to deal with them? Um, I'm a professional athlete. I'm at the highest level of my career. And, you know, whatever. He convinced me to do it. I got on the phone with you, a uh, Zoom call. And I think uh, if I remember correctly, it was probably within 15 minutes. I remember looking off to the side of, of the computer and I was like, I'm all in. And I think we continued to talk for about another hour. 
And, uh, man, it, I didn't know how much it was going to change my life, um, in the moment, but man, it's, uh, it's, it's changed everything about my life, every single facet of it. How, how, when you say it's changed every aspect of your life, take us through some of the things that you feel like frails, the mental game, um, has, you know, our relationship, the mental performance work that you're doing. What has, <clears throat> have you noticed it's really changed for you? Um, I, I think that you, the way that you put it in your 30 day program, um, puts it best as far as simplifying it, because there's so many avenues and I like to think of it. And I tell you this all the time that it's, it's like, uh, it's like an onion, right? You you're constantly, uh, peeling back layers to this mental game. Um, and just when you think you've peeled back the last layer, there's another one waiting there for you to peel back. Um, but I just think that there is, um, like, you well for one like you think like getting into the mental side of, of the game you you automatically think that like there's um uh, going back to uh crap I, I lost my train of thought when you, going back to the the layers so the way that you put it simply is is when you have a physical skill set right you have to learn the the drills and you have to learn all of these things that allow you to optimize that physical skill set that you have for for that specific position let's say that you're that you're trying to perform it um it's no different on the mental side like when people talk about mental performance it's it's generally spoken in a very general sense and nobody ever dives into the nitty-gritty of like how do you do it how do you apply it mm. and no different like you mentioned all the time in your in your 30 day that it's no different from a physical skill set as you need to create a mental skill set for yourself um that was the, that, that was kind of like the light bulb for me because I was like, I don't know how to. Mm. And when, when, when you break it down in such minute detail that not only goes into your career, right. And, and what you're trying to optimize on the field and what you're trying to do on a daily basis within your job. But it also, I mean, you see it quickly dripple into, um, the family life, um, you know, my relationship with my wife, my relationship with my kids, my relationship with my father, uh, my mother, um, all of these facets uh, that you start quickly realizing that, you know, it's, it's bigger than that, right? It, it's not, it's not about just performing for my job. It's like, it's an, it's a wellness for myself. Um, and it's, it's slowly being able to learn what the best version of Jake Fairley is and how to, how to make that best version of Jake Fairley show up each and every day. Yeah, I love that. I know one of the things, you know, you mentioned was like doing the drills to develop those mental skills. And we take an approach of of exactly that. We do drills to develop skills, to create a skill set that is mental performance. And, you know, Frails, there's been, there's been some videos that we'll link to in the show notes below. The first game back, the first game back mm -hmm. from your injury, you go two for three. Uh, they're interviewing you after the game and you go through what we call the four stages of buy-in. You're like, man, mental game wasn't really for me. And then my agent connects me to this guy who works with UFC fighters. And I thought, well, it's, if it's okay for them, maybe I'll check it out and I get into it. And then you look back and say, well, I can't believe I did it any other way. You know, and then there's another video where they show you and they talk about an index card that you have in your back pocket, oh, which we picked up from Sean Casey, right? Of the three yep. keys to keep it simple. Would you talk about the concept of the three keys to keep it simple and how that's been helpful for you? Yeah, it's, it's been huge. Um, you know, hitting is such a complex thing. Um, and any way that you can do to, you know, make it simple, right? So the three keys to keep it simple, um, they're going to work to your advantage, especially when you are in the big leagues, you know, playing in front of 20, 30, 40,000, if you're lucky enough in a big enough stadium um, and it's sold out um, and you're in a high pressure situation, having to accomplish what your job is every single time you go up to the plate, pitch by pitch, um, you know, you need to be able to figure out what works for you to be able to be in that moment, be in that high pressure moment, recognize you're in that moment, and then be able to, in a sense, take a step back and kind of like separate yourself from that moment to be able to like take a deep breath and be like, okay, I've been here before. And so for me, um, you talk a lot about Sean Casey and I remember you sending me a video and obviously I was, you know, because of you as well, fortunate enough to be able to, to meet Sean and, and, and talk through this with him, um, which has been unbelievable. Uh, you know, it was, it's the same exact card that he used when he played and it's uh, three very simple keys and it's see the ball, be easy, 
hammer it. And ever since I was a kid, my father taught me when I started playing baseball, keep your eye on the ball, see the ball. Mm-hmm. Very basic, fundamental, remind you to do that. Um, be easy. For me, being easy is uh, just being able to be present in that moment. And how am I being present in that moment? Again, going back to you and everything that you've, you're, you teach within the mental performance game on how to do it, how to apply it, my breath. Um, understanding within my process and my routine of when I'm in the box, I'm using that breath as um, almost an anchor for me um, to not lose control in the situation when I'm in a realm of so many things that are out of my control. Um, and then the last one being hammer it, right? I, I want to be up there and I want to hit the ball hard. So, you know, it's, it's doesn't take a lot of, uh, you know, detailing to understand hammering it. Um, so if those three keys have done, you know, I mean, wonders for me um, to be able to, you know, look at that card in the on deck circle, going up to my bat, replaying those phrases while I'm walking to the plate um, within my routine from the on deck circle to the plate to when I dig in. Um, and then even as far as, you know, if I feel myself getting out of control, I'll be in the outfield and I'll take that out and I'll glance at it knowing that I'm going to have an at bat the next inning um, when I'm not kind of in that circle of focus within the outfield of the specific play um, and being able to keep myself in that, you know, frame of mind. So you actually have a card that you keep in your pocket that's laminated. And then when you, when at the end of the game, you take it out of your pocket and put it in your locker for the next day. Yep. I have a spot there. It's the last thing that I put in. Uh, I put my uniform on and it's the last thing I put in my back pocket before I head out to the game. I love it, man. Very intentional with that routine. Other aspects of your routine that I know you're intentional about frails is the pre pitch route, the pre at bat routine, the pre pitch routine, and then the red, yellow light release. Take us through when's an at bat start for you four people away doing your visualization. You talked about when I walked to home plate, hands on the barrel, I clean the box, feeling the dirt, take us through the detail of like when that at bat starts and when it's over. Yeah. So, uh, <clears throat> when that person that is coming up and that, you know, is in the hole, I see him starting to get his, uh, bat and batting gloves and bat, um, or his helmet, batting gloves and bat, um, is when I start to get into that routine. So I start to slowly start to work my way over to the helmet rack. Um, and then from there, as that hitter finishes and I'm starting to be in the, you know, in the hole, I will start putting, uh, I have a whole routine of how I put on all of my stuff. Um, so I'll go, uh, I'll go helmet and then I'll go leg guard. And after that, I will grab my bat and gloves, thumb guard. Um, and then I strap my gloves and grab my bat. And then from there, what I put myself on the same spot in the, on, um, on the stairs and from the stairs, I'm waiting to go on deck and I, uh, I'm watching the pitcher. Um, I'm continuing to watch him through the at-bat. And then once I get to the on-deck circle, as soon as I step on that dirt out of the, out of the dugout is when I really start to flip into um, my, uh, my pre-at-bat um, routine, right? What we have really established uh, in very, very – you know, great detail. And, um, while I'm in the on deck circle, um, I'm glancing at my card quickly to, to, to remind myself of my three keys. Um, and then from there I am using my breath the same way I do when I'm in the box. Um, and I'm going through and I'm working on my load every single pitch as the guy, you know, is, is going through his at bat that's at the plate. And then right when it is my turn to go up to bat is when we, really go into all right this is this is serious go time right now um and from that point i grab the barrel uh with my left hand and i watch myself uh with all four of my fingers um around the barrel grab it twice and then from there um i start walking to the plate while i hold the barrel in my hand and as i'm walking to the plate i'm reiterating to myself my three keys Mm -hmm while taking very intentional deep breaths in through my nose and out through my mouth. And then as I get to the, uh, the circle of the box, um, I am, uh, stepping up into the box. I have a little thing where I did a a ditch into the back corner. And then from there I'm digging in the box and I am reminding myself of, uh, see the dirt, feel the dirt, hear the dirt. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing these in a very slow intentional way. Um, and I have it timed perfectly with the new pitch clocks and all of that. Um, and as I'm doing that, I'm allowing myself 
my brain the the moment allowing my brain to be in that moment and it for it to recognize like i've been here before and this is my place this is my domain and then from there i wipe the dirt and i say out loud and all the catchers have heard me um that this is my plate and as i say that i'm staring directly back at the pitcher um and from that point i take a step out and i shrug my shoulders and then i take a deep breath and I find a G on my bat and it reminds me of being in, you know, in a green light. Um, and I finish that breath on the G. And then from that point, I step in the box. I do, uh, for me, um, I have a, uh, a last, um, a last feeling for me. Um, I know you, you talk about using a thought, an image or a feeling. I use a feeling it works for me. And I do a little check swing of a, uh, of where I want to make contact mm -hmm. uh, as far as like a last feeling. Um, and then from there, um, once I bit the, bring the back back up, up to my shoulder, I reiterate, see the ball, be easy hammer. And I take one more breath and I go. Nice. Nice. I mean, that's, and for any of the players listening to this, doesn't matter if you're another big leaguer or you're, you're a little leaguer. Listen to the intention, listen to the detail, listen to what Jake's saying about this routine of the intention, the breath, the way you hold the bat, the way you take and feel the dirt, hear the dirt, and see the dirt under your feet as you're digging out that box. Because if I can seal it, feel, if I can see it, feel it, and hear it, I'm in the present moment. You also talk about I'm, I'm, I'm up on that top step. I'm looking at the picture. I'm visualizing myself going to doing damage off of that picture. I'm talking to myself about this is my box. You're reiterating your three keys. Like it's a, it's a process that you follow that's going to give you confidence and help you be present. Now, what happens, Jake, if in an at-bat, let's say you swing through, miss your pitch, or umpire makes a bad call, and you get into a red or yellow light where you get out of control? How do you flush that and get back in control? Yeah. So I have, um, like we, you know, have gone through and, and again, gone through in very much detail, uh, I have a release routine. So within that release routine, um, which happens a lot, <laughs> it, it happens a lot with how much failure there is in baseball, how much is out of your control with the umpires. Um, so when that happens, I, and I recognize, right. And, and, and you hit it spot on when you go through your 30 day, that this is the hardest part of the program mm to accomplish but it is the most beneficial as far as an awareness nature of your red yellow and green lights um it is a very difficult thing um to uh, to to create that ability to recognize that you know when that's happening within yourself and you know when i recognize that i'm going through that i take a step out of the box i undo my batting gloves i look at the left field foul pole i reiterate to myself left field foul pull, let it go. So I'm doing something where I'm voicing it. Um, and then from that point, um, I'm taking a deep breath on the uh, top end of that left field foul pull. I'm finishing the breath on that focal point. And then after I finish that breath, um, I am uh, restrapping the gloves. I'm doing my shrug again. I'm doing another refocus breath on the G on my bat. And then from that point, I'm locked back in. I'm ready to go. Mm -hmm. And like when you explain it, it seems like it's like, a lot you know th this is a lot but it yeah. happens like this yeah. and before we go into uh anything else i want to make it a, a a very vital point and the reason why it's able to go so quick i practice this every single day before i even get out to the game mm -hmm. in my tea routine i'm very very intentional about my tea routine it's not a lot of swings but every swing is intentional and after every single swing i go through that routine of when I get in the batter's box, wiping the dirt, wipe, uh, digging it into the back, back uh, end of the box, see the, see the dirt, feel the dirt, hear the dirt, swiping it. I'm looking down to the end of the cage. I'm, I'm visualizing there's a pitcher and I'm staring him down and I'm telling him this is my plate. I'm doing my breaths. And then usually within that T routine, I'm not perfect. I'm going to have a couple swings here and there where, you know, I didn't execute what I wanted to. And I'm practicing that release routine as well. And I'm doing that on a daily basis in the cage work of my T routine, only T routine. Um, so that when I get into the box and I'm in those high pressure situations and I'm facing Max Scherzer or Corbin Burns, my brain is able to recognize we've been here before. Mm. And it brings it to a place of almost comfort and peace because it's, it's building that connection back to, okay, we did this in the cage and we've done this a million times in the cage and within that cage is within my controlled environment. So mm. it's naturally allowing my brain to kind of have that moment of like, 
we've been here and we can kind of relax a little bit. So naturally those cortisol levels are going to drop. Mm-hmm. Whereas normally the average person in those moments, that cortisol level is going to be through the roof. And that's when you get shaky, your nervous system's out of whack, your vision closes. And now you're not able to execute what, you know, you've done hundreds of times before you even stepped in the box in all your prep work. Yeah. It's awesome. You know, it's so much detail there. And I think when we're talking about getting present, right. And ways to practice that talk about how you do meditation and how you would use, Oh, let's just stay there. One question at a time, Kanner. How do you use meditation to keep <laughs> you in the present moment for else? Yes. Yeah, so, um, I'm a believer in Jesus. Uh, so a form of meditation that I do on a daily basis is getting alone with the, with the father and, and being able to just spend alone quality time in my secret place with him. Um, and then from there, uh, I do breathing exercises. Um, I've done a variety of them and I know a lot of people like to describe it as, as, you know, there's not one right or wrong way. It's more of a preference. Um, and you know, I have a, uh, I love to do the box breathing, um, a lot. I've, uh, started nibbling, uh, with, uh, I think his name is Wim Hof. So the Iceman, his breathing yeah. exercises, I really, really like a lot. Um, so I'm doing that form of meditation as far as being able to do breath work on a daily basis. And then when we are preparing to, you know, to go into that game, to go into battle, um, I'm doing uh, visualization um, with, uh, uh, with our meditation practices yeah. um, that are, that are tailored and custom to me and the keys that I'm trying to focus on, on a daily basis, um, visualizing, um, and bringing me into previous successes, what I'm trying to accomplish, um, looking forward to who I'm facing. So in those moments of, uh, of going through those, um, those three, four, five, six minute, um, meditations, uh, practices before I, you know, I hit the field to compete, um, I'm visualizing myself facing, the pitcher that I'm facing that night and his pitch sequences and his shapes of his pitches. Um, and then while we're going through that, we're doing another set of breathing exercises and allowing my body to be at a place where, you know, my heart rate is, is at its baseline. Um, I'm allowing myself to be in this state of, um, of just relaxation. Uh, and then, like I said, visualizing what I want to do when I step out on that field to, to attack. Yeah. And then, and then another part of that pregame, right. You're watching their, their video of their picture, the mind, your, yep. your mental imagery, audio, talk about the mind movie, the personal little highlight yes. video that you use and how you use that. Yeah. So right after I do the, the, the meditation practice, as we go through the visualization and the breathing stuff um, and, and going through all my keys, uh, I have a mind movie and that's put together um, uh, with all of my previous successes. So I'm watching myself do um what I'm planning to do, you know, mm-hmm. later that night and, and, uh, being able to like your, your brain doesn't recognize, uh, when you're doing visualization, right. Your brain doesn't recognize, um, that it's not doing it or doing it right. It's, it's firing the same way as if you were physically doing what it is that you're thinking or visualizing. So being able to take yourself from a visualization and then being able to, you know, open my eyes and see myself doing the movements that I need to do and I want to do um, off of, you know, all types of pitches, right? I'm seeing fastball, sliders, curveballs, changeups that I'm hitting and I've done well in the previous, in the past games um, and being able to watch it on repeat uh, before I step out to the field. Mm. You know, another thing I know that you do pregame and postgame and then in the off season, you make it part of the morning routine is journaling. How important mm. has journaling been for you, Frails? Uh, it's it's been a game changer. Um, just being able to, uh, like, I think today, I think I hit 460 or 70 straight days of three gratitudes of the day. Um, obviously I'm not perfect. I have a couple days here and there where I miss, but it's pretty damn close. Hmm. Um, and those, you know, that's part of, that's just one part of the journey, right? Like I go through, um, I go through what my one word focus is, right? So, uh, each um, kind of quarter of life that I'm in, I am figuring out what it is that I want my one word focus. So like, you know, what the season of life that I'm going through right now, my one word focus is submission. Mm. Um, And so in my journal, I'm writing down one word focus and I'm reminding myself, this is my one word focus. 
because um, I like to do a word of the day. So like a, like a little vocabulary game that I like to you know do. So I'll, I'll do a word of the day. I'll write it down what that word is, the definition. And then I'll get into my three keys. So my three keys are um, grounded, uh, gratitude and acceptance. Mm-hmm. I'm reminding myself of what my keys, um, almost like my keys of success, the same way, like the keys to keep it simple on the field. Yeah, These are the yeah, yeah. three keys to keep it simple off the field for me. Um, and then I get into my three gratitudes, right? You, I mean, living a life in gratitude and thankfulness and understanding, you know, how blessed all of us are, you know, and giving that gratitude back to, you know, the Lord for everything that he's given to us for today, right? We have breath in our lungs. We're awake. We're alive. Um, you know, we get to live our lives. Um, so being able to do those gratitudes and then I quickly get into three wins that I had, um, the previous day. And then, um, and then I have, you know, two to three affirmations that, that I like to go through of just reminding myself of, uh, again, like the best version of myself. Hmm. Um, and then I do a start, stop, continue, um, to start out my day, um, which kind of more or less references, um, what I've been going through in the previous days leading up to that journaling entry. Um, and I go through again, just what I want to start doing, what I want to stop doing, what I want to continue to do. I love that. And I know one of the things that has been helpful for you just in terms of feeling like you're playing offense and being prepared, right? We talk a lot about separation is in preparation is the concept concept of time blocking and assigning Mm. blocks as your day to create like a one pitch at a time approach to life. How do you use time blocking? How helpful has it been for you, Frails? I got it ingrained in my head. We got 86,400 seconds in a day and we got 168 hours in a week right so being able to the the great separator is time um everybody is you know in my profession everybody's waking up every morning to go hit to go throw to go do arm care um to go do strength work to hit a couple of recovery protocols everybody at that elite level is doing those things, right? So what it is, what is it that you can separate yourself from all of these other individuals? And that's where you're really going to see the long game with what you're trying to do with your career and playing, right? And, and being the best version of yourself over the longevity of your career. Um, but the thing that you do to separate yourself is utilizing your time the best, right? Everybody has the same a lot of time, every single person. And being able to be intentional about what I'm doing and when I'm doing it um, I think for me, especially when I started and I still get the same feeling every single day that I wake up is I don't have to waste any energy thinking about what I need to get done. Every night when I go to sleep, I go, go into my Google calendar and I plan out my entire day. Um, my wife knows exactly what I'm doing when I'm doing it. Um, if my kids, I, we were just laughing before we started the podcast, me and my son have a have an allotted time block at five o'clock every day for 30 minutes to go sword fight in the front yard. And, you know, Jason knows at five o'clock, this is mine and Papa's time to go sword fight and being able to not waste any energy mm-hmm. on what I'm going to do and how I'm going to do it. Now, every single day is not going to go according to plan, right? Like you were very intentional with telling me when we started, you know, working together that, if you can accomplish 80% of your, your block schedule, you're winning um, because there's things throughout the day that I have no control over and that's just life. Um, but when I can, you know, accomplish 80% of what I blocked out for my day, it was a win. And most times I can. Um, and that's because of the intentional aspect of, of building out my day, the way that I know it needs to be structured and to be able to accomplish, you know, I, I no longer have those sayings of like, ah, oh, man, like I've been telling myself, I want to do this for a long time. I just haven't gotten to it. Like, no, if I want to get something done, I put it in my schedule and it gets done. Hmm. So there's nothing anymore of, of, ah, I'm like procrastinating. I'm not reading this book. I'm not doing this. Like if it's in the schedule and I, and, I, and I'm going to a lot of time to it, it's going to get done. Hmm. And then you track what you actually do and don't do with using an app, a success checklist. We use habits here, oh, yeah. concept of a success checklist. How impactful has that been for you? It's being able to measure out and see just how much you do within a day, right? Because the habit share is going to be a direct reflection of what's within my allotted, you know, mm-hmm block schedule right so everything if you go through or if you go onto my google calendar and you look at my am routine everything within my am routine is going to be seen within my habit share Mm -hmm. um because all those things are uh 
they need to be measured as far as, you know, how often I'm doing it or, or when I'm not. Right. And yeah. I love the aspect of habit share in the, um, in the way that it allows me to have accountability partners. Right. So like I share my habit share with you, you share yours with me. I do it with my brother. I have a couple of buddies of mine that I share it with that I got, you know, I talked them into doing habit share and I got them on it now too. And so we share back and forth and I'm able to see, um, it gives you a percentage of how often you are, uh, you're keeping up with all of your stuff or how often you're not. Um, and it allows me to have that accountability partner, um, with everything that I'm doing. And I get to break it down in, in, in great detail. Like I said, it, it breaks down my entire schedule and even more so on the back end of my days when I get into bed. And, and again, this is part of my PM routine where I go through my habit share and I, I check off what I did or I didn't do, or if I had this, if I skip something, it's, it's such a sense of accomplishment to be able to scroll through. Like, I think right now, I think I have like 54, 55 habits right now that I'm tracking. And when I scroll through that thing and I, I see a bunch of green check marks, especially during the baseball season, if I had an awful day at the plate, you know, an awful day, you know, at the field, when I lay down and I go to sleep, I mean, it is, it is a really good feeling to, to lay down and go through all those check marks and be like, man, because everything within that habit share are all things that I can control. And so when I lay down at night and I can see that I dominated everything that I, that is within all of my control, hmm. it, it gives you such a sense of accomplishment. It gives you a sense of peace. Um, that I'm doing absolutely everything I can to be the best version of Jake Fairley um, mm. on a day-to-day -day basis, right? It has nothing to do. Um, it kind of gets you out of that headspace of, uh, of what baseball does to you with how hard it is and how long the season is um, to be able to just have that in my, in my corner of like, yeah, today didn't go your, your way with uh, the game, but man, like I had a lot of things I had to get done today and I dominated. Yeah. yeah. You know, Frails, I want to be respectful of your time here, man. We could talk all day and we got just a couple minutes left. And I think one of the things that you have done such a good job of is taking the mental game and transitioning that into life. How does the mm. mental game for you transcend from what you do between the lines to now what you're also doing with in life? Yeah. Um, so and we, you know, me and my wife haven't, uh, you know, announced this to, to anybody. Um, I don't think there's any better way for us to kind of start mm -hmm. that transition of announcing it than with someone like yourself that has, you know, and I know we've talked about this a few times and I'm going to mention it again. Um, you know, when I started with you two years ago, I thought it was because it was going to teach me how to be the best baseball player I could be. Um, but really it was about, you know, teaching me to be the best father and husband that I could be more than anything. Um, and not for the good times, right these, you know, good times, it's easy to go through things um, and kind of coast through life and things are amazing. It's, you know, you, you do all of this work for yourself so that when you, when the ground starts to shake, um, you know, you're not, you're not rattled by it. Right. Um, like I want to be sleeping in the boat the same way that Jesus does. Right. And, um, you know, me and uh, my wife were, um, were made aware that my daughter uh, was diagnosed with leukemia um, about a month ago, a little over a month ago. And it has, uh, for one, it has, it has absolutely grounded us um, so much in understanding um, just how amazing and great, um, you know, Jesus is. Um, it has allowed us to be able to take a sense and almost a, uh, take a sense, take a step back at, just how many amazing things are in our life. Um, right. We, we live in a fallen world and, you know, with human beings, there's a lot of things in this world that are one out of our control and, and two that are just, you know, it's just evil. It stinks. Um, but at the end of the day, when you have people like yourself, Brian, that are teaching mental awareness and mental, you know, fortitude um, and not only teaching it, but, showing it in a very practical way to be able to apply it to your life on a daily basis. Um, it has done wonders for me because, uh, you know, being able to take everything that we just talked about very briefly uh, of the baseball world and be able to transition it into when I'm walking into the hospital room and in infusion for my daughter to get chemo and my wife and son are sitting in there waiting for me to walk in, um, being able to come home after uh, you know, training all morning so that I could get home 
to have 90% of my day at home with them um, and be there for my wife, you know, as obviously my daughter needs a lot more attention to her now. Um, but being able to walk through that door with intention behind what I'm there to do. And it's not to say, well, me and, you know, this stinks and, you know, how are we going to get through this? No, it's me walking through the door. I understand how to take all of those things that I do in baseball. Cause when I step through that door, it's game time, right? Mm. That's when the lights turn on mm. and I need to be there to be a husband. I need to be there to be a father and I'm there to protect and provide for my family. Right. The gospel is very clear. And that's my job as, as, as their, you know, protector and provider and spiritual leader. And when I step in that, in that room or step in the house, being able to apply all of these things to that nature of what I need to get done um, has been amazing. And I didn't even know it two years ago that, that that's what it was preparing me for, but it wasn't preparing me to go out at 7 PM, 7 30 and, and face Corbin Burns or, you know, Aaron Nola. It was to walk into the hospital room where my daughter's getting chemo to help her fight through this and support her and my wife. And then to step through the door and be the best damn dad I can be and the best damn husband I can be. Um, when me and my family are going through the toughest storm that we've ever gone through. And you got to go through the storm to get to the sun, brother. So, mm, you know, yeah. you're not going to be tasked with anything that you can't handle. So sink to your training, trust the work that you've been putting in and show up every day and just take it one pitch at a time in life and in baseball, man. Jake Fraley, bro, we're going to have you back on. We're going to continue this conversation. I appreciate you being vulnerable. I appreciate you opening up about your, your mental health, your mental performance, your family, man, prayers and love sent to you and your family and your daughter. And uh, couldn't thank you enough for coming on here and being a part of this. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed that mental performance mastery podcast with Jake Fraley. So much great information there to break down about how to take the mental game and use it as a elite performer, but also how to take the mental game and use it in life. Some of the strategies he talked about from time blocking and meditation and the success checklist, and then how he's using it to handle the challenges that he's facing off the field. I think there's so much there that we can take and we can learn from. I hope you were able to take some knowledge and nuggets from this podcast with Jake Fraley. Hey, wherever you're listening to this, if you do me a huge favor, please make sure you subscribe to Mental Performance Mastery Podcast. Make sure you hit the like button. And if you would, please leave a review so we continue to get better here on Mental Performance Mastery. Thanks for being with me. Dominate the day.